guys, welcome back. I have some interesting stuff for you today. I know, I'm lame. Well, have you heard about the viral Twitter thread that happened a few days ago about the theory that the end of the world happened back in 2012 and we are all living in a computer simulation? Let's jump right on into it because it's too interesting to just not talk about. There's a place called CERN and CERN is a European laboratory for particle physics. And it was opened in the 1950s and it was originally a European organization for nuclear research. So, but now it's the other thing. And CERN has like the top scientists in the world. They made this machine, which is the largest machine in the world that was ever made. And it is called the Large Hadron Collider. Now this machine is described as a 27 kilometer ring of superconducting magnets with accelerating structures to boost the energy of particles. So 27 kilometers, is 17 miles and now this machine is 175 meters which is 574 feet underground and it is beneath the france and switzerland border by geneva a man named nick hinton is the one who created this viral twitter thread he goes on to start saying, so did the world actually end in 2012? Well, that was the year that scientists at CERN finally found the Higgs boson. Now that is the particle that Stephen Hawking said he predicted would end the universe and in his own words, undergo a catastrophic vacuum decay. Stephen Hawking is saying that, then why are these people playing with it? I don't, I don't. Nick Hinton says, well, what would happen if we destroyed the universe? Would we even know? Maybe CERN accidentally created a black hole that sucked us in without even noticing and we've all been living in there. Some physicists actually believe it's possible, which is terrifying to think that or to even know that they think that. And that there's an old argument that nothing has felt right since 2012, and but maybe it has something to do with growing up and getting older. Ever since then, it seems like the world descends more and more into chaos each day, and time even travels faster. Which you know, that does happen when you get older because you start to notice things more, and time just goes by faster when you get older. Then there's some sort of chaos happening every day. Um, mass shootings are only in the news for a certain amount of time now, and then it's like it never happens and so on and so forth. He also says, in fact, there are some people out there who are reporting small differences in this reality and the one they remember before 2012. So these Mandela effects, which the first one and where it came from is because of Nelson Mandela. Everybody thought that he had died in prison and people remember having his funeral and stuff. And then he was released from prison, not dead, obviously. And everybody was like, whoa, wait a minute. We remember him dying in prison and having a funeral. What the heck? That's where the Mandela effect came from. So the Berenstein Bears is the one of the biggest ones that I see everywhere and people talking about. It's not Berenstein with the E-I-N but it's Berenstain with the A-I-N. I remember Berenstain. And so it is basically everybody else. And so the reason why this is brought up is because what if we are in an alternate universe and little minor things have been changed? I mean, it would make sense. But then also it could be, you know, people remembering things wrong, but I like to think the more creepy avenue, you know? Also, some people remember Febreze, um, Skechers, Looney Tunes, JC Penny, all of those being spelt a different way. Um, and the list goes on of those things. Too. But this is where the Mandela effects gets a little bit creepier and it has to do with Lady Liberty. So she was supposedly supposed to be on this island called Ellis Island, which there is so much evidence to support that that's where she was, but she is located on Liberty Island. He says, here is a painting clearly depicting the statue at Ellis Island with no other islands nearby. Was it the artist just not paying attention? Did he like it better this way? I really don't think so. 
Then he says, now if that's not strange enough, if you go onto Google Maps Street View, there is a few specific areas of Liberty Island where the Statue of Liberty is just gone. The account uploading these strange pictures goes on by the name of Augustine Bartholdi, that is the designer of Lady Liberty herself. And the account also sports his picture from the 1800s and he's Google approved. So back in the United States entry into World War I, the Germans committed the first act of terrorism on US soil. And it was considered one of the largest artificial non-nuclear explosions to have ever occurred. He says, I'm wondering why I didn't hear about this in school. And he posts the article of it. And then he says, the explosion is the reason the Statue of Liberty's torch is closed to the public. And it has been closed for over a hundred years. But the only problem with that is people have pictures. People remember being there. There is a Twitter account at Statue Ellis Foundation, which makes no mention of Liberty Island at all and sports a creepy banner photo of people walking upstairs that lead to nothing. And then he posted a link to a video that is a collection of Facebook photos where people have tagged their location at Statue of Liberty, Ellis Island. But the people are posing in front of and staring at nothing. Oh, there is a viral thread on 4chan posted by someone claimed to be one of the 23 scientists at CERN responsible for, for creating the Mandela Effect. And they claim the planet was destroyed and we'd all be placed in a simulated world. They would have to know that that was going to happen first in order to be placed in a simulated world, wouldn't they? Like, maybe they planned it all out or something. The whole thing goes on and on and there's other theories. Um, the idea of simulations within simulations or a multiverse is not um, something new, which we all know that. But there is a quote from Alan Watts that illustrates it perfectly. And he posts the quote and he says, Imagine a multidimensional spider's web in the early morning covered with dewdrops. And every dewdrop contains the reflection of all the other dewdrops. And in each reflected dewdrop, in the reflections of all the other dewdrops in that reflection, and so on and infinium. And then there's the turtles all the way down myth, which the, the world sits on the back of a turtle who's standing on a larger turtle, and that turtle is standing on another larger turtle. And that's the Buddhist's um, conception of the universe in an image. Then there are other people besides the Mayans that had predicted 2012 would be the end. One of those people is a man named Terrence McKenna. And he didn't necessarily believe the world would end in 2012, but that there would be rearranged um, parts of our reality. The last thing that he said is that Preston B. Nichols, a supposed whistleblower who wrote books detailing the time travel experiments at Montauk Air Base, claimed that they were never able to time travel past 2012 because there was no future beyond it. Do you believe that we're in a simulation and the world ended in 2012? I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. That way you don't miss when I upload. And um, until then, stay tuned. I really hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in my next video.